Are you tired of getting outplayed? Constantly getting demolished? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Pro Guides is the number one proven way to quickly level up your Smash Ultimate skills. Whether you're looking for tier lists, character guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Esam, Zero, and MK Leo support Pro Guides. So what are you waiting for? Click the link to start improving right now. The Super Smash Bros. series has had a lot of controversial top tiers. In Melee, it was the Puff. In Brawl, we had Meta Knight. And in Smash 4, there was no question about it. It was Bayonetta. Bayonetta got so much hate that when Ultimate came out, Nintendo nerfed her into the dirt. She went from the best in the game to just like, if you have any self-respect, you do not pick Bayonetta. Believe it or not, Bayonetta is surviving in the ultimate meta. Even after getting nerfed and overshadowed by her teenage DLC son, Joker. In fact, some pros like Salem and Tamim have used her to get big wins. By big wins, we mean Salem using Bayonetta to beat 8-Bit Man, Lima using Bayo to beat Austin and get first at Strong Region, and Tamim getting fifth at Glitch 6, beating Mr. E, Rivers, 8-Bit Man, and Wadi. Don't get us wrong, Bayo is nowhere near what she was. RIP Smash 4 Bayo. But Bayo is still getting pretty good wins if you consider that she's a low mid-tier character. In today's video, we're gonna break down two things. First, we're gonna break down Bayonetta's unique position in the meta. Second, we're gonna break down just how Salem and Tamim make Bayo work, despite her pretty glaring flaws. This video will be good if you're curious to learn more about Ultimate's current meta, and it's great if you wanna learn how to play Bayonetta's strengths yourself. Let's dig into the meta, and this time, we're actually not gonna focus on stats and win rates. Honestly, they're not even that interesting. Watching the paint peel is more fun. Instead, let's talk about legacy and counterpicking. There are a lot of mid-tier characters in Ultimate, and each one tends to have something that makes them a little different. In the case of Bayonetta, that something is legacy, and it makes her a lot different. Bayonetta wasn't just great in Smash 4, she was also stylish, entertaining, just beautiful. I can already hear the Smash 4 veterans just screaming in the comments. Listen, not everyone's gonna have the same taste, but like Brawl Meta Knight or even Melee Fox, Bayo could do some seriously cool stuff. So when Ultimate came around, Bayo's legacy remained, even after she got nerfed to oblivion. You could look at Peach as the new combo you to death character, and some of the legendary Smash 4 Bayo mains have. But Bayo's legacy means that a lot of really good players have stuck with her and made a regional threat. There's Tamim, formerly Mistake in Canada, Lima and Shadow PR in Texas, Geist in Ohio, and others elsewhere too. Her legacy also makes her something of a comfort pick for top pros, or panic pick. So at a major tournament, you've probably seen a few PGR ranked players lose on Bayo. Mute Ace tried to use Bayonetta for T's Pac-Man, and Salem tried to use Bayo for Maester's Game & Watch, and uh, you know, it didn't, uh, didn't work so well for them. Ultimate bought nerfs, but also left her core play style intact. While that keeps her both fun to watch and play, it means that most of Ultimate's good players already kind of know the matchup. They learned it by fighting the better version of her in Smash 4 over and over again. While Bayo didn't get a lot of favors when the engine switched from 4th gear to 5th, she did get one. Now, she's a solid counter pick against a very specific arch type that Ultimate's designers seem to like. The projectile setup based heavy. That might sound oddly specific, and it is. It's also weirdly common. There's King DDD, King Cave Rule, Bowser Jr., Samus, Piranha Plant, and Rob. Bayonetta can do well against characters with the linear projectile game because of Witch Time, her down special. Witch Time functions like a counter, but it slows and stuns an opponent rather than hitting them. This totally destroys the normal flow that linear one option projectile characters get used to. Bayo can even use this to get an upper hand against Ness, Robin, and other characters with damage over time projectiles. She just SDIs out, activates switch time and either gets out of trouble or gets out of trouble. Pretty much any character that establishes a predictable pattern of neutral using one or two projectiles can struggle against Bayonetta. When those characters are heavies too, Bayonetta does even better. Her biggest game is her combo game, so naturally she does lots of damage to heavies. Her second biggest game is the movement game, so she also outmaneuvers and whiff punishes lots of heavies too. That makes my girl pretty solid into some very common matchups, particularly Rob. This is where we've seen top pros break Bayonetta out of great effect. Salem used Bayonetta to beat 8-Bit Man, and the best solo Bayo placing all year came from Tamim at Glitch 6, where he ran into two prominent Rob players in top 8. Where Rob would normally get to pressure opponents from all distances and set up traps, can't do that with Bayo. Where Rob can use neutral air to safely 
actually land in most matchups, Bales will react to the animation with Witch Time and bring the heal down. So listen, Ultimate Bayonetta still doesn't hold a candle to Smash 4. I mean, that's obvious, but don't go throwing Bayo out just because she's being outdone by her canonical son. She still fits a useful niche. She's also still really cool. So now let's take some time to go over how the pros still win with Bayo. To do this, we're gonna focus on Salem's set with 8-Bit Man and how he both plays the Bayonetta's strengths and covers her weaknesses. The most important thing to Bayonetta and maybe to Smash is movement. Bayonetta lost a lot of things in Ultimate, but movement was not one of them. She can still outmaneuver a lot of the cast and that strength is now key to playing her well, especially because she's a tall lightweight, one of the worst things to be in Ultimate. Being tall makes you easier to hit and combo while being light makes you die earlier. So Bayonetta mains need to stay elusive to stay alive. How do they do it? Not so differently from Smash 4. They jump and use their up special Witch Twist in neutral. Witch Twist isn't nearly as frustrating as it once was, but it still has a lot of priority and speed. Bale can also still jump and perform a lot of options out of it. Against 8-Bit Man, Salem uses Witch Twist to beat his opponent's options, with punishing moves before they even end. Then he turns it into a combo of his own. Salem uses that same aerial mobility to dodge hitboxes and disadvantage and avoid getting pinned down. Bayonetta's elusiveness also makes her surprisingly tough to deal with when she's ahead. Salem builds a lead on 8-Bit Man in all of his winning games, which forces 8-Bit Man to approach if he wants to win. Bayonetta now has end lag on a lot of moves, which means they aren't super safe. Not a lot of her moves beat shield either, so if she has to approach, she can end up in serious trouble. In fact, in the one game Salem dropped against 8-Bit Man, he never even held a solid lead. Salem knows this and builds a lead that forces his opponent to approach. Once they do, he uses Bayo's elusiveness to dodge everything and retaliate. When the opponent often uses a projectile or two to approach, this strategy gets even better. Here's an absolutely insane play from Salem as an example. If you didn't catch that, he knew the angle Diddy Kong tossed a banana, caught it with witch time, waited for the pressure to make 8-bit man air dodge, then landed a smash attack after the air dodge. Sick as she is, it is important to note that her lack of solid approach options and her laggy moves are a big part of what hurts her in the tears. Bale's matchups into really defensive characters can look rough. Just watch as Salem tries to get in on Miser's Game & Watch. The Whiff Punisher becomes the Whiff Punished. Bale also suffers from a lack of kill options in this game. Even the good Bales will often have to work an opponent up to 170% to reliably get a kill. She basically can't kill people off the top anymore, so her approach to taking a stock has to change a lot. Now Bayonetta gets kills either through a stray move, a good witch time, or off of the side using edge guards or ledge trapping. Like her actual son, Bayonetta also has some pretty good edge guards in general. That can help her against some of the popular sorties with bad recoveries too, like Krom or Cloud. Here's an example of a nice creative edge guard to meme got on a PGR ranked player, Rivers. Lots of lows and mid tiers have the same problem as Bayonetta. Their kill confirms are obvious or lacking in some way. So to patch that up, the player has to get pretty good at reading what their opponent will do in disadvantage and responding. In Salem's case, we see him do this a few ways. In game one against 8-Bit Man's Diddy Kong, he carries Diddy off the stage. Then he reads the first up special and catches it with a move. Then he carries Diddy Kong off the side with a witch twist. Now that's reading the defensive options for an edge guard off the side. Throughout the stock, Salem reads 8-Bit Man and literally every Rob's tendency to land with an aggressive option. Here, Salem doesn't get a kill, but gets a lot of damage and pressure. Here, Salem gets a kill. That's all Salem's reading an opponent's defensive tendencies, then using which time to get about as guaranteed a kill as Bayo's gonna get. Then, it all comes down to pure option select. Sometimes Salem simply reacts to his opponent and picks a good raw move. In game four, he catches 8-Bit Man using a side special and whiff punishes with a forward smash. In game three, he clearly reads and outspaces a neutral air. Sometimes, in fact, more times if you're low tier, you just gotta give him a good smack. This is another reason why it's important to survive for a while as Bayonetta. The rage she gets can determine if a smash attack kills. And her kill power has been so nerfed that closing a stock below 120% actually feels like a blessing. Or a curse? Cause she's a, uh, she's a witch? Uh, I don't know. Anyways, Rage helps with one of Bayo's main issues, which is getting kills. It also boosts her damage even further. Bayo still has a lot of combos, combo starters, and aerial frame traps, and most of her damage output stays online even when she has the increased knockback from Rage. She gets the same combo, just with more damage. So, as Bayo, the goal is to stay elusive and stay alive. Then, once an opponent gets frustrated, catch them with a witch time or whiff punish. But staying alive as Bayo isn't as easy as it sounds, especially since her recovery is not what it used to be. For the unacquainted, Bayo's up special now extends her hurtbox above the ledge. Opponents can actually punish her as she grabs or gets near ledge. 
To cover this weakness, Salem mixes up his timing with a lot of different approaches, including wall clings and jumps. In this example, Salem first goes lower and pushed in towards the stage, making his ledge grab timing a bit trickier and harder to punish. And in this example, Salem doesn't even go for the ledge, but jumps around it, then which twists back onto stage. Stages with walls also help Bayonetta because she can cling to the wall and wall jump, adding a needed mix up. All right, so now we have a better idea of how Bayonetta gets her wins and survives after such huge nerfs. She may not be high tier, but she does counter some high tier characters. She's well built to beat certain archetypes and matches up well against a few popular picks. She generally plays a bit of bait and punish and does better when ahead. Her elusive movement suits reacting and responding, and while she can't kill, she can build up damage. Interestingly enough, all of her changes in ultimate have changed her core playstyles in one sense. Now, she isn't nearly as good for high risk playstyles. In Smash 4, she could legendarily turn a whole stock off of just a few risks paying off. In Ultimate, there's a reason that a defensive-minded player like Salem keeps doing well with her. She's not suited to the high-risk playstyle anymore. However, now that she isn't totally meta-dominant, she's actually a lot more fun to watch and root for. From Smash 4 to Ultimate, Bayo went from great to mediocre, but also went from way overused to a rare treat to see in bracket. 